Welcome to The Radiant Life with Tatiana. I am your host and I'm obsessed with empowering you to live and create the best life possible. I'm a master mindset coach, breathwork facilitator, and a passionate little Latina who loves sharing the magic behind your subconscious mind and energetics. If you're looking to uplevel your mindset, learn all about spirituality and manifestation, and to be inspired in making a change to embody your best self, you are in the right place. My goal is for you to see and unlock your limitless potential, to have the tools to break free from the chains holding you back so you can create and live your most radiant life. I am so excited to have you here listening today. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hello, love, and welcome to the Radiant Life Podcast. Today, we are talking all about how to handle imposter syndrome. This is something we all experience. I've dealt with it my entire life. And I actually just recently went through it again, like a big context that I want to share with you. And I want to share with you how I handled it because I handled it so much differently than I would have in my past. And I know we all experience this. We all feel this within and it doesn't serve us. And it's holding us back from stepping into our true potential. And that's what we're all about here is to stop dimming our light so we can step into our true power, into our potential so we can create the most radiant life. So a few weeks ago, like two or three weeks ago, Evan and I got invited to the biggest event in Palm Beach at the Breakers. So it was like this business development event, this gala. And if you don't know what the Breakers is, the Breakers is is the most luxurious, prestigious hotel resort in America. And it's on Palm Beach Island. So that means a lot of wealthy people go there. A lot of big name people, politicians, people in the government, celebrities, like, I don't know, a lot of people go there, right? And I had this idea in my mind where like, oh my God, like once I heard that, I started freaking out. Like, who am I to be there? I'm not a multimillionaire. I don't have this, you know, thousands of like business, like who am I? And I was freaking out and freaking out and telling myself this story. And I felt like an imposter and I became aware of it. And I was like, well, I can't, feel like this imposter when I go there because people feel energy. So I had to work through it, which I did, which I'll share with you how I kind of did that. And I went into it with more of a confidence and with ease. And, you know, I've, I've always struggled or or I don't want to say struggle. I've always experienced imposter syndrome growing up. Like I've always dealt with it and maybe you have too, whether you know it or not. And I began to be able to identify like what that was and understand it when I started my business. Um, but just just in case you don't really understand what imposter syndrome is, let's break it down a little bit. So it really stems from the belief that you're not good enough or that you haven't achieved something because you're not truly good at it. Right. It's like, it's that you, you might, you may have achieved something, but you feel like a fraud, like a phony, like a fake. And honestly, I think this, we're always going to experience this imposter syndrome. It's always going to happen as we grow and evolve because as we grow and evolve, we're stepping into this identity that we've never been before. So it does kind of feel fake, right? And like, who am I to do that? It truly just means that there's actually just something that you haven't learned yet, or you haven't understood or a skill you haven't developed. And the issue with imposter syndrome though, is like when we create meaning of it, or when we give in to those negative feelings, those lies, those beliefs that are creating this imposter syndrome fraudness feeling within us right and then we feel down on ourselves and that's not empowering that's holding us back from who we're truly meant to be because we're like letting the lies dictate us so maybe maybe you're sitting here and you're like oh yeah I've definitely felt like a fake or a fraud or like I'm not good at this right but you are So for me, like I noticed I've experienced this my entire life as growing up as a kid and it started as a kid. I didn't really know about it until I was an adult and started my business, but I've always experienced this. So a few, a few things that I've experienced imposter syndrome growing up, like I always just kind of felt like a fraud or not good enough. So like every time I got called on in class, I always had the thought and believe like I'm, I'm, I'm going to be wrong and I'm going to embarrass myself because growing up, I kind of had this identity that I wasn't smart enough. I had ADHD, didn't really focus well. I struggled with getting good grades and teachers and people around me kind of like validated that belief that I wasn't smart enough. So even if I did say the right answer, I still felt like a fraud. Like I fooled them, right? Or I would hold myself back from sharing good ideas in student council. I I still didn't feel good enough in student council because I didn't win 
I forget what, what I ran for. It wasn't secretary. Maybe it was secretary. I don't really know. But I didn't win, right? But I still was a member on student council. And because I saw those around me as better than me or smarter than me because they had the labels as president or treasurer, I just didn't share my good ideas as much with them. And that was holding me back from stepping into, you know, who I was meant to be as a, as a member in student council. And I was holding the world back also, right? Like I just felt like a phony, a fraud. When I took tests, I automatically just assumed that I was going to fail because again, that belief of not being good enough. And then this is when I noticed that I really felt like imposter syndrome. So once I got on Adderall at the end of high school, I was actually able to focus and study and work hard. And it felt so not like me because I spent my entire life until like junior year of high school not doing that. And and I, I'm not saying to go on Adderall. I actually don't agree with Adderall. And that's a whole podcast story for another time. But that's just part of my journey and part of my story. And so what I noticed was when I actually did good on a test, maybe like my senior year of high school or in college, like I actually put the work in and I studied. And then I would go into the test and with the thought and belief like, oh, I'm going to fail. And I would go to people like, I barely studied. I'm going to fail this test, right? And then when the test would come around, if I did good, I would not own it. I would be like, oh wow, I don't know how that happened. I got lucky. I would feel really awkward of like owning the hard work and the efforts I put in because I felt like a phony. I felt like a fake. Like I just told them I didn't study even though I did. And then I got a good grade, right? Like, cause I was still operating from this belief of not being smart enough. Same thing when I got my degree, I have my degree in industrial engineering and I've caught myself to this day when I tell people like, yeah, well, I, I don't do that anymore, but I did get my degree in industrial engineering. And they're like, whoa, they're like shocked, right? Doesn't help my fraud feeling. And then I will like, I have said before, like, yeah, well, I cheated my way through it. Like I felt like, I feel like I fooled everyone because I didn't feel like I was smart enough. And I mean, it's just like not owning it. We feel like this fate, this fraud because of these old lies, these old beliefs within ourselves, right? Same thing with my job. When I worked in corporate, in, in, in the engineering, in the logistics, like I just constantly have this fear that like people are going to catch me that I wasn't this smart engineer. Like I got my degree in it, but they're going to, they're going to find out I'm a fraud, that I'm a fake, that I'm not actually smart. And then I couldn't like receive the accomplishments of, of whatever, like I had accomplished. So it just kind of always bled in, like it really stemmed from like this belief of not being smart enough or good enough. And, and I would just kind of walk around like, I'm just lucky. I'm lucky I did good on that test. I'm lucky I got that job, that degree. And I just constantly felt like a fake and the same thing, it started, it, it's been my entire life. So after that, I, like I truly learned what imposter syndrome was when I started my business and I was in a coaching program because that oh, being an entrepreneur and starting your own business really shells, sheds light to like those beliefs, those, I feel like a fake, right? Like who am I to have a social media presence, to post this on social media? Who am I to be an entrepreneur and to have this business? Especially because I didn't feel smart, didn't feel good enough. No one around my life or family had a business, right? Like, so who am I? I felt like this fake, this fraud. And then it lingered into when I got clients, I would talk to them and then I would panic like, Hey Tots, can we talk? Like, can we have a phone call? And then I would panic and be like, Oh my God, they're going to quit. They're going to find out I'm a, I'm a fraud. I'm not an actual business owner. I'm not an actual good coach. Like they're just going to find out the truth of me, which I don't know what truths I thought they were going to find out. Even though I knew deep down I was delivering great value. I was delivering results and they just wanted to like maybe praise me or ask a question. I truly was struggling to believe in myself and step into this new identity. And like business coaches used to say, like, fake it till you make it. But when you do that, you have no confidence, no energy behind yourself. And then you feel like this imposter and you feel like this fake instead of owning who you are. So maybe some of my stories kind of resonated with you. Maybe for you, it's not feeling good or worthy enough for like a loving relationship or for the love your partner is giving you right? So you feel like an imposter. Oh, they're going to find out I'm not a good person. Then they're not going to love me anymore. Or maybe you're scared to ask for the raise at work or to start for a starting salary because you don't feel like you're worthy or smart enough for that raise or that you did a good enough job. And you're scared if you ask for that raise, they're going to find out that you're a fraud and you're actually good at what you do. Or maybe for you, it's that fear of like not posting on Instagram when you're starting a business and you want to start this business, whether it's an Etsy shop or a coaching business or real estate, right? And you're like, oh, but if I post this, then everyone's going to know I'm a fraud because like, who am I to do that? I'm not that person, but you are. Maybe you don't feel good enough like as a parent. You're not owning the accomplishments. Maybe you became a millionaire. Maybe you became a doctor. You got your master's, but you can't own it and you still feel like an imposter. You're maybe identifying with the old versions of you. And the issue is 
this is holding us back. This is creating these negative results in your life. And, and it's causing stress and it's causing overwhelm because you're constantly feeling like, oh my God, they're going to find out who I really am. This truth that I'm a fraud, right? <laughs> like, oh my God, it's so funny how we do this to ourselves. And then this impacts our beliefs. It impacts our confidence. It impacts our actions, our results. It impacts us being able to even reach our goals and receiving our goals. Because if you don't feel like worthy or good enough, like if you're feeling like a fraud, you're not going to ask for the raise or the promotion or the salary, right? Or maybe you don't take the action and start the business and start posting on social media. It's stopping you from becoming who you're really meant to become and stopping you from getting what you want. This feeling of imposter, who am I? This fraudness. And so for me with this gala, I noticed myself kind of slipping back into like those old thoughts, even a few months with like social media and my business. You know, those parts of us still can linger sometimes. And I took a pretty step, big step back in my business last year as I, you know, went through the breakup with Devin and I just had to figure my shit out. And on top of that, while I was doing that, I also was discovering more of like, okay, who is Tatiana? Who is this next version of me? And I was stepping into this next level, this next identity, this of a coach, of a breathwork facilitator. And with the breathwork facilitator, breathwork facilitator, you know, old thoughts were coming up of feeling fake, right? Not being good enough. Oh, I just got lucky like that this client had this massive breakthrough in our coaching session or that these women like in my retreat had this amazing transform transformational experience. Like I just got lucky. No, I like, I deliver these results because I'm good. And again, this is just like old stories that just like slowly lingered back. I've caught them in the butt, but some of them were stemming from, it's so funny. Some of them were stemming from like the lack of numbers of growth on social media. Like, ew, numbers don't mean shit. The 100,000 followers doesn't mean you're successful or you're a good coach or you're a good person, right? I know coaches that have 1,000 followers with six, seven-figure businesses, right? Like, and But that was like just these old beliefs. And then I got bigger with this gala because I was going to be at this event with like prestigious CEOs and governors were there and multimillionaires. I mean, like the owners. Oh my God, I forgot his name. I forget, but the owner of the Miami Dolphins, the football team was there. Like, why am I in a room with him? You know what I mean? Imposter, I'm a fraud. They're going to find out I shouldn't be in this room because I'm not a multimillionaire, right? And like, I hope this like, I hope you guys like get where I'm getting at. Like we all experienced this and I felt it too. And I was kind of freaking out. And so, you know, I had these shit, I had this awareness of like, okay, these thoughts have been kind of lingering back up again. I put them down. But then as I step into a new like identity, they kind of slowly come back up. But I made shifts and I learned from other ways I've handled the imposter syndrome, how to handle it now with more tools and more awareness. And that's what I want to like share with you. Like, I think it's like five steps of how to handle this imposter syndrome. Because for me, I felt it when I started my business. I felt it when I started showing up on social media. I felt it when I started a podcast. Who am I to start a podcast, right? Who am I to become a breathwork facilitator? I'll tell you who I am. I'm meant to do this. I'm meant to do this. And if we let the imposter thoughts and beliefs and the fraudness, we're going to hold ourselves back from stepping into who we're truly meant to be. So here are five steps of how I handle and recommend handling imposter syndrome. So the first one is you must become aware and identify these feelings, these thoughts, and these beliefs of the imposter syndrome, right? Without awareness, we can't ever make change. We have to become aware. We have to accept it. So like I said earlier, sometimes imposter syndrome can feel like you don't, you're not at the level of like education. You don't have a skill. You don't learn something, right? Like maybe you're in a room with multimillionaire business owners or, or realtors or, or teachers, right? You don't have that skill, that learning. So a good thing you can ask yourself is like, okay, what skill have I not learned? That's causing this feeling of being a fraud or being a fake. Like, I don't know. So like, do I want? So for example, in the gala, say I was, I was talking to people in like accounting or real estate or in finance. Right. And I was like, Oh my God, I feel like a fake. I feel like I shouldn't be in this conversation right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a coach, a mindset coach. And I was like, okay, well, do I even want to learn these skills? No. Okay. So for me, I was like, okay, then why do I care? Own who I am and that's it. And just be in the conversation. I don't need to be, feel like I'm a fake. Maybe you do want to learn the skills. Okay, cool. How and what steps, but bring awareness to like, what are the thoughts? What are the beliefs? 
what is the feeling that's causing this fraudness, this imposter syndrome? And if it's like, I don't feel like I belong in this conversation in this room. Okay. Why is it something that you need to learn a skill that you need to develop? Or is it just in your head that you feel like you should, but you don't have to, we're not all meant to know the same things. Feel me. Okay. So you become aware of these thoughts of these beliefs. Step two, call out these bullshit beliefs. Call these fucking things out. Okay. They do not serve you. They do not serve you. So a great way to do this is to write them down or to say it out loud. Because when we're in our head, it sounds so much worse. It sounds so much scarier. It sounds so much more true. But when we write it down or we say it to someone, it like softens like that strength, that energy, that sting to it. Because then we kind of realize it's actually kind of fucking silly. Like, do I actually believe? Is it is it truth that you're not, you know, a good realtor, a good nurse, a good interior designer, a good coach, a good mom? No, that's not fucking true. That's just these stories in your thoughts in your head. But when you say that out loud to someone or write it down, it's like, oh, wait, that's not true. That's so silly. Why do I believe that? Right? I don't deserve to be in a room with millionaires. Says who? Says who? Why can't I help them? Right? You know, it just you call bullshit on these beliefs. Step three, you create, you decide, and you claim the new truth the truth, the new belief, and you write it down. The thing is, is like we all have beliefs and we all get to believe honestly, whatever the fuck we want. So if you get to believe anything you want, why not believe that you're good enough, that you're smart enough, that you're hot, that you're sexy, that you're, you're capable, that you are X, Y, Z. So for me, like, I love the thought of like, why not me? Instead of being like, why me? Why would someone hire me? Why would someone give me the raise or the promotion? Why would someone choose me to sell their home? Why would, why me, why me? Um, excuse me, why not you? And identify why not you? What makes you unique? Maybe you have a big heart. Maybe you're great at, I don't know, I'm trying to think of ideas of depending on like the circumstance, right? But why not you? So for me, like, why can't I be in this room? I'm good at what I do. <laughs> and the freaking funny thing is, the conversations I was having with these people, like, were breakthrough sessions for them. I remember speaking to a woman and she owns a multi-million dollar business, very successful. You know, she's worked with like, um, Michael Jordan, Pitbull, like, okay, okay, great business. Right. And me being me and owning that I'm good and that just, just being me, I'm not cocky. Like I just was able to go into it without imposter. And I was just in it. My conversation with her was breakthrough. I asked her a question and she looked at me. And she was like, you know, no one has ever asked me that question before. And she was like, I get interviewed. I talk on like shows, like I'm on podcast or like all these things. And no one has ever asked me that one question before. And I'm sitting over here like, what do you mean? How has no one asked you this question before? But that's just who I am. So I got to shed light on an area of her life because she felt safe to open up to me. And I shed light to an area of life where she could improve. You know, it was in relation to just not having good boundaries with her, her business and her job and putting her job in front of work. I mean, not work, putting her job in front of family, friends, relationships, her kids. And I was like, why, what makes you not be able to put that down? Whatever it is, right? Like, I don't want to get into specifics, but, and so like, why can't I be in this room? No, I can be in this room because I'm good at what I do. And I have what it takes just by being me, just by my, my heart and my curiosity and the skills I have as being a coach. And like, I'm, I'm a good coach because I can see the patterns and, and the, the behaviors and the habits and the beliefs. And I can kind of like rephrase them to you and word them to you in a way to ask you a question for you to become aware of it yourself. And at the end of the day, we're all fucking human. So I had to like, let go of like, who's to say you're better than me? because you have a thriving business. No, we're all fucking human, right? So I got to choose the truth. I got to claim my truth and create the new belief that I am good and I get to step into this room, okay? Claim it. If you get to believe anything at all, believe that you're good, that you're smart, whatever you want to believe. Create beliefs that empower you, that feel good. Because why, why believe the beliefs that don't, right? No, throw those to the curb. Okay, step four, breathe it out. Feel it, normalize it in your body. Feel the safety, feel this newness within you. This is why regulating your nervous system is great because I did breath work before going in. I got to energetically breathe out the beliefs, the fears that, because emotions are just energy and motion that were in my body. I got to breathe it out and I got to 
go into it with this state of calmness and groundedness. And if you followed me on Instagram, you, you knew that I made the reframe that I wasn't nervous. I was excited because excitement and nerves light up the same part of your brain. The difference is the label you put on it. So instead of being like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. Oh my God, what if they find out I'm a fraud? I shouldn't be in here, that I'm not the lever. I'm not a governor. I'm not a mayor. Why am I here, right? No, I'm excited. I'm excited to meet these people. I'm excited to have these conversations. I'm excited to step in this, whatever it is, step in this new version of myself. So for me, I breathed it out. You breathe, like you got to make this feel normal in your body. Breath work is a beautiful tool to shake out that old energy, move those old beliefs out of your system. And so for me, breath work is great. I shake, I dance, I move the energy, just like la, 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 shake it out and then normalize it. So once you shake it out, whew, step five, normalize the new, make it feel right. You know, maybe you create affirmations. Maybe you breathe into the new version of you. Step five is normalize or normalize this new belief, this new you, this lack of imposter syndrome. And remember who the fuck you are. And do something that makes you feel good. So as you normalize the new, what makes you feel good? What can make you tap into that energy? For me, dancing, I'll put on like a good song of like, it was a good song of mine. I don't even know. Like a good confidence song. Like Ariana has some good like confident songs, right? Maybe for you, it's Beyonce. I'm not like the biggest Beyonce fan, but you do you, right? Whoever makes you feel good and confident and confident and like an empowered boss lady. Dance, sing, dress up, look cute, do your hair, and strut your shit. Normalize this new you. You are good enough. You are not a fraud. And remember who you are. This isn't a step, but another good practice is to learn to receive praise and compliments. Ah, goodness, women, ladies, oh my God. Statistically, I know this. I don't know the facts, but I know this statistically. But every time women receive a compliment or a praise, we we like don't always receive it. We're like, oh my God, thanks. But like your outfit's so cute too. Like, oh my God, thanks. I, you know, but really though, it was my, my friend who X, Y, Z, I don't know. Like we, we want to praise everybody else. We can't look it into ourselves, but when we can learn, I, I tell this to my clients, building the muscle of accepting praise and compliments, we can normalize that you are good enough. You're good at your job. You are a good mom, right? Accept it, accept it, feel it. Yeah, you're right. I am. And then affirm. Because at the end of the day, allowing this imposter syndrome to identify you and to rule you, you're being stuck in this down feeling. Like it doesn't feel good to feel like a freak, to feel like a fraud, to feel like, oh my God, they're going to find out who I really am. No, that doesn't feel good. Having this imposter syndrome does nothing for you. And it does nothing for the world. Because you being down and you not owning yourself and who you are and your gifts, you're not going to change the world. You're not going to make an impact. You're not going to bring who you are, your uniqueness to the world because you don't feel good enough. You feel like a fake. You're not going to show up as your best self, right? And at the end of the day, every single one of us, we're here for a reason. We're all unique. You are here for a reason and you need to embrace yourself, embrace every new chapter, every new level that you're going into. Instead of telling yourself you're not good enough, you don't belong here, you're a fake, you're a fraud. No, change the narrative, rewrite your story. You are, you're learning. Imposter syndrome literally holds you back from being your true self back from sharing your gifts to the world. It's literally keeping you back from living the life that you're made for, that you're meant to, holding you back from stepping into the person you're meant to be. So now it's time to become aware of it, to accept, okay, where do I feel like a fake, like I'm an imposter? Shake it off and take action on it. Do something different. Do something about it. Instead of identifying with the old you and holding you back, create a new And like, we're doing this together. I'm right here with you. Like I just shared exactly how I was feeling a few weeks ago, right? But the difference is, is I now know how to identify with with it. I know how to work through it. I know how to call bullshit on my beliefs. I have people in my corner, mentors, coaches, friends that will help me move through it if I'm struggling with it. And then I know how to create a new belief. I know how to regulate my nervous system to breathe out what doesn't serve me, to shake it off and to create a new but I'm right here with you. I still experience it with you. And maybe for you that you're like, okay, cool. This is great. Maybe you need support. Cool. And that's what my containers are for. What coaching is for. People are out here to help you move through this, but you got to do something about it. Right. But we're doing this together. I'm with you and I'm going to feel it again. The next project I do, I'm going to be like, oh my God, who am I to do this? But you know what? That idea, that thought, 
that vision was in my mind and in my heart for a reason because it's meant for me to execute. And so if I allow this imposter syndrome, this fakeness, this fraudness, this not good enoughness to hold me back, then I'm doing a disservice to who it's meant to serve and the impact it's meant to make. Oof, oof, oof. You feel me? You guys feel me? This is a little fire, passion episode. Shocker, my fire energy. But like this literally resonated so much with me because I felt it and I kind of came clean on my stories a few days ago. Like I've been feeling this block or this disconnect with my social media presence on Instagram um, of like showing who I am, like a little bit of that imposter again because I put walls up as I was going through my stuff and I'm like, no, no, this doesn't serve me. And me sharing that, there was so much feedback, like, oh my God, thank you. Or me sharing the feedback that I felt like, who am I to belong in this gala? So much, so many of you guys reached out with like, oh my God, I felt the same way before. Yada, yada, yada. And some of you were like, okay, how do I, how, how do I overcome this then, Tati? How do you, how do you just own it confidently? So I wanted to create this episode for you. So I hope this, I hope this served you. I hope this gave you some good tips, tips, excuse me. Um, if you need any support, reach out to me, email me. If you want to apply for coaching, obviously that's all below. Um, or maybe you just are you're ready to do this on your own. And if you are, I will tell you that this ebook, I finalized it. I'm finalizing it today, tomorrow. It's like done. This ebook is done and I'm so excited. It's it's great for beginners who want to get into like this mindset, this personal development, becoming more aware of your thoughts, your beliefs, this self-discovery, right? Maybe you're not ready for one-on-one coaching or embrace your radiance, my group coaching program. So this ebook is going to be super affordable. There is so much in it. I don't even know how many pages it is. I think it's like, I don't even know. There's so much. It's an interactive ebook where you're going to be able to, um, there's journaling prompts, there's spaces for you to answer questions, to help you get clear on your goals, to help you discover your beliefs. There's, there's links to meditations to help you develop habits and routines that serve you to become more mindful and more self-aware. There's a breath work audio manifestation meditation, like, Ooh, 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 there's juiciness to it. So I don't have a release launch date, probably going to be end of November, end of October, beginning of November. I have to think of a name. That's literally what it is. And so I was talking to, um, uh, I don't even know what to call her. I'm like, whatever. Anyways, I need to figure out the name. We're coming up with a launch strategy. Um, we're going to get it in your hands. And even if you've done this work, it's just going to be a great tool for you to just have as a reminder just to have, right? So stay tuned. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at Tatiana underscore Kuto. You'll, I'll give you updates there. I'm going to give you updates here on my podcast family and on my email list. You guys always are going to get the deets. So make sure you're following me. You're staying up to date. If you have any questions, let me know. You can send me a message, send me an email. I know. I just hope this, this resonated with you. So again, like this is information. Now go do something with it. Go take action on it. If you need support, reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. I hope this, I hope this just was everything that you needed to feel confident, to feel empowered and to feel good enough that you are good enough for what you want. If this did, oh, please take a screenshot, share, tag me on Instagram. I would really love to hear more feedback from you whether it's an, an iTunes review or sharing on Instagram, I, I appreciate the private messages. It means so much to me and it just allows me to know what you're valuing from so I can create more good stuff for you. All right, well, thank you so much for listening. Go own it, own yourself, own your power, claim it, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. I love you and I hope you have the most radiant day. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with me and write an Apple iTunes review so I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me, you can find me on Instagram at Tatiana underscore Kuto. Make sure to tag me in any posts that you share. I love and appreciate you so much and cannot wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out and radiate your light into the world.